Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here on this fine Wednesday morning, the last Wednesday in October. Uh, it's a brisk and chilly, <laughs> chilly day, and uh, but I am thankful for it and glad to be here with you all. Uh, today we'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 4, uh, starting in verse 1. So feel free to uh, crack open your Bibles and, and look there uh, to start today. Um, we'll be talking about... Um, actually, we'll be continuing what we've been talking about. You know, we've been going through Ephesians, and it's a pretty... Um, you know, linear, linear book of the Bible. It's not um, uh, a difficult thing to understand if you read it from from start to finish. And so we'll be continuing through there, and we'll be talking about unity uh, for a little while once again this morning. Um, so I just wanted you all to, you know, be ready for that. Um, I'm excited. Uh, so let's say a word of prayer and dive right in. Lord, I want to thank you for all that you are and all that you have done and all that you have provided for us. Lord, we thank you so much. God, I pray that you would continue to just work in our lives, Lord, that you would bless us, um, but also that you would strengthen us that you would sustain us, that you would grow us to be the people that you want us to be, that you would sanctify us. Lord, I pray that uh, you would speak through me this morning, that you would give me uh, words to say, and I pray that um, you would give our church ears to hear, Lord. We love you, thank you, in your name, amen. All right, chapter 4, starting in... Uh, verse 1. <laughs> Therefore, I, the prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received, with all humility and gentleness and patience, accepting one another in love, diligently keeping the unity of the Spirit with the peace that binds us. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is a, who is above all and through all and in all. Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the Messiah's gift. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took prisoners into captivity. He gave gifts to people. But what does he ascended mean except that he descended to the lower parts of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he personally gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the training of the saints in the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into a mature man with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning, with cleverness, and the tex techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body, building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. All right, so let's head back over to verse 1, <clears throat> and we're going to start there. So it says, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received. So you need to walk. We're believers. We need to walk worthy of our calling. And our calling is that calling of Christ, that calling of God. And that calling, as we talked about earlier, uh, a few weeks ago, that calling unites us. 
the gospel is what unites us. And uh, in verse 2 and 3, it explains uh, how we're supposed to do this, how we're supposed to walk worthy of this calling. It says, with all humility, with gentleness, with patience, and accepting one another in love, diligently in unity. So all of these things, we need to be <laughs> uh, united. Okay? Because we are united by the true gospel. And that is explained in verse 4. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all. There is one true gospel. Only one. Paul's very clear here. He's not talking about multiple ways to heaven. You know, we have Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have Paul here saying, there is one body, there is one faith, there is one baptism. That means that we are all together as one, but at the same time, there is only one way, one thing um, that saves us. There's one hope that we have, and that hope is God, and one faith that we have. That faith is in God, and one God, one Father of all. And He is the one who has shown us mercy. Uh, moving on to 7 through 12, I'll reread that for you. Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the Messiah's gift. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took prisoners into captivity. He gave gifts to people. But what does he ascended mean except that he descended into the lower parts of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended by far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he personally gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the training of the saints in the work of the ministry to build up the body of Christ. So we are united. We are to be united as we talked about in previous weeks and as we kind of went over just a little bit here. Uh, but we are also to be diverse. We're not all supposed to look the same. We're not all supposed to act the same. And God has gifted us in a variety of ways. Uh, we have different gifts, and Paul lists just a few of them here. They're listed elsewhere, uh, like in Corinthians, um, and Peter lists some, I believe, as well. Um, but Paul lists them here. He says, we have uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, um, and that's just a few that make up the body of Christ. Um, and so we, sorry, I was reading one of the comments. <laughs> uh, and so we need to use those gifts. We have them. They have been provided to us by God and we need to use them. He has given us these spiritual gifts for our benefit. Uh, Paul describes it is to build each other up. Um, God has created us differently and he did it to support each other. Um, just an example of this, my marriage, uh, Casey and I are very, very different people, but in a good way. Um, you know, she is very much an introvert, <laughs> uh, and that is fine because it, it slows me down. Um, you know, but I, I enjoy going out and doing things and seeing people, um, and it gets her out of the house, you know, and, uh, it helps, uh, helps the both of us. And that's just one way. And that's kind of a, um, a lesser example of that. But, you know, in the church, we all can't do everything because we're, um, many of us have many different talents and I'm sure that you've all heard this before, but it is so important that you get yourself plugged in and involved um, and serving somewhere because you have a talent that the Lord has given you that nobody else has. Um, and you need to utilize that. It's very important that you do. Um, and because we're all different, um, you know, it provides variety in the church and opens up opportunities for ministry that we may not have had before and and provides new ways that we may be able to reach the lost that we did not have before. 
Um, but we're supposed to be diverse, yeah, but we're also supposed to be spiritually mature. So we're supposed to be united and diverse and diverse and mature. So we need to, this is the uh, order that Paul's kind of going in here. So 14 through 16, uh, Paul says, Then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning and cleverness and techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head Christ. From him, the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. And so, um, some examples of this, you know, we can't let our diversity uh, cause division. <clears throat> you know, we're, we're all different. But we can't, we can't see those differences and um, misinterpret them and misunderstand them. Um, some examples of this, you know, are when people are worshiping, uh, you know, everybody worships differently. I, I see it. I'm on a leading worship almost every week and I, I have the opportunity to watch you all and see you all while you're worshiping. Um, and I know that it's early in the morning sometimes. And so people are a little more reserved. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they're not worshiping, you know, and the people who are super expressive and and very just boisterous and loud and all over the place you know those people those people are great but we can't expect everybody to worship the same way but does that now does that mean that they're the other people who aren't doing that the more reserved people or even the people who are still sitting down does that mean that they um aren't you know are they they not feeling it <laughs> no no they just express their love for Christ differently uh, than you do, <clears throat> and that's okay, you know, but we can't let that, that change us, we can't let people with different talents, uh, we can't uh, see those different talents and let those talents divide us, we need to be there, we need to love each other, um, because we, like verse 16 says, uh, from the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself. Um, so we are used, we are fit together in a particular way um, that God will use to grow us. Um, and he has given us our talents that we have um, for a specific purpose. And we must no longer be children. We can't be children. We can't be immature about it. We need to understand that um, there's a there's a bigger picture out there than what than what we see, and that God is infinitely wizard, well, <laughs> wizard wiser than all of us, <clears throat> um, and so we need to allow Him to use us to build each other up properly. So uh, thank you so much for coming out this morning and paying attention, and listening, and hopefully I. You know, give you some words of encouragement this morning. Um, you know, I love you all, and you all. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Bob and Pat Merriman. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's great to see you all every every morning, every Wednesday. Um, I look forward to it. So, I'll pray and uh, let you all have a wonderful day. Lord, I uh, thank you so much for this church uh, that I am a part of. Lord, I pray that we would. Just remain united and unified. Lord, I pray that we would um, celebrate our diversity as a church. That we would uh, utilize the gifts that you, would, you have given us. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't squander those. I pray that we would um, bless each other. That we would build each other up with, with those things, Lord. I pray that you would grow us. So that we might not be immature, but I pray that we would be oh, just a just a strong uh, church in our belief and our faith, Lord. I pray that we would continue to to be built up by you every day of our lives, Lord. Thank you so much for all that you have done. 
uh, I pray that you would continue to walk with us each and every day. In your name, amen. All right. Have a blessed day. Hope to see you all soon.